Well, did you know that there are millions of Christians around the world who are being persecuted for their faith? Joining us today is Bruce Cleminger, president of the Evangelical Fellowship of Canada, an organization dedicated to providing aid and relief to those in need, as well as sharing the word of God. So welcome, Bruce, to our program today. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Bill. Thank you. Now, you're the president of the EFC. What is this organization and why was it founded? We're a national association of evangelicals. Uh, being, our association includes uh, 46 denominations, uh, higher Christian education institutions, uh, as well as a number of mission organizations and individual churches. Uh, we are founded as a gathering place for evangelicals, so we provide a platform for partnership and collaborative research and initiatives amongst uh, evangelicals. Uh, we publish the magazine Faith Today. And um, we're probably best known for our work in Ottawa. We are regularly in the halls of Parliament Hill and before our courts on issues ranging from uh, euthanasia to suicide, religious freedom, and so on. So that's who we are and what we seek to do. Well, I appreciate it. I know the church I pastor, we partner with you and appreciate the work that you are doing. Uh, just, yeah, to represent the evangelical voice in Canada. But you're also involved in the broader world, in the church family. So what is the biggest issue that you are facing right now? Uh, well, uh, apart from the pandemic and how churches and Christian organizations are responding to uh, to the pandemic, uh, a, a considerable issue for uh, Christians globally are is the issue of persecution. Uh, we estimated that about 300 million Christians live in countries uh, that do oppress or persecute Christians, and it's estimated that one in eight uh, Christians have been persecuted or oppressed. So certainly a, a significant issue. And just building on your intro, uh, we are part of the body of Christ. So in Canada, we are knit together, and EFC is one of those organizations trying to knit Christian organizations and individuals together. And globally, uh, there's a thing called the World Evangelical Alliance, which is a global organization. It's about 137 countries that have entities like the EFC that belong to the WEA. We're clustered into regions. And the W does a whole range of issues and you know, evangelism, uh, you know, issues of social justice, as well as persecuted church. So in the area of persecuted church, there's really three facets of what the WEA does. I used to be on the International Council. Council. Um, and the first one is uh, uh, advocacy. So they actually, uh, WA has offices in New York and Geneva and uh, different places of the world, and they uh, regularly appear before uh, UN councils, committee meetings, and so on, advocating for uh, religious freedom for human rights and advocating for Christians being persecuted. Another level, there's um, uh, um, another component that's involved in research on religious freedom, and they produce an international journal for religious freedom, and they actually have Canadians involved uh, from uh, Vancouver and other places. Uh, it's again globally, and they research and do investigations and try to advocate for religious freedom. And lastly, there's, an, there's a Religious Freedom Commission, and uh, it does a number of things. It monitors, uh, it's tracking about 100 countries. Uh, it it's actually gets really engaged in defending if they can hire lawyers or specific situations. And also they work with governments and ambassadors trying to advocate on behalf of persecuted Christians. Oh, I, well, I love that. I love the word advocacy. It, it means yeah. to come alongside. And we're seeing an increase in people escaping persecution from their yeah. homeland, and they're finding refuge here in our great nation of Canada. That's right. So how are you actively helping those who are escaping these very, very difficult situations? Well, it's interesting. Uh, we have a, an annual gathering of our the heads of all our affiliates. And in 2014, uh, there's a group of leaders at one of the tables, and we were talking about what else EFC can do, and they raised the issue of, is of refugees. They, it, God had put it on their heart that we need to mobilize more effectively to settle refugees in Canada. And this is about a year before the Syrian refugee crisis uh, became very pronounced. And so we crafted a memo, uh, just a one-pager, about uh, why it's important to welcome the stranger, the biblical rationale for getting involved, uh, kind of terms of reference, and a number of denominations signed on. On. And a number of them already were sponsored agreement holders, so they already have agreements with the government to sponsor and settle refugees in Canada. Others either created, their, uh, developed their own relationships or joined with other denominations. And at one point a few years ago, we figured out that about 
Denominations represented about 4% of the Canadian population settled about 19% of the refugees during that Syrian refugee crisis. There's a number of avenues. Canada's excellent in terms of how they settle refugees. Uh, the government brings in some on their own. There's some where churches or communities partner with government. And there's also privately sponsored refugees. So if you know of someone who you think qualifies, um, then uh, you turn their name over to uh, the government, which is assesses the risk and the assessment and so on. So there's a variety of avenues, and uh, some are escaping persecution. Um, a lot of uh, churches and church groups will settle whoever's in most need. Uh, so whoever um, yeah, is in dire straits, and that's identified by the UN High Commissioner of Refugees. And uh, so often you'll have churches and church groups settling um, people of a variety of faiths and welcoming them into their into their communities and giving them support and enabling them, helping them to get on their feet and uh, living a new life in Canada, uh, away from freedom or persecution, or rather away from persecution and, and right. need. Uh, yeah. that, I think that's amazing. So we only have a few moments left, but just quickly, how can our viewers maybe get actively involved if they want to be a part of helping those who are escaping persecution? Well, uh, on our website, the, there's a working group that uh, EFC facilitates, and they came out with a book called Welcome to Stranger. It's really a, a handy guide for local congregations, for churches, for groups that want to sponsor refugees, provides all the data, the, kind of the, the information on how you do that. Uh, but then also there's a thing called International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Church, and you just check idop.ca. It's a global initiative, but there's a groups of organizations in Canada who facilitate a guide, and it's to encourage churches and Christians to pray for the persecuted church. Well, thank you so much. And if you'd like information, you can go to our website and find all of that there as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for Bruce. Keep up the great work. Thank you.